everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we have another sketch with me video. Um, I realize I haven't done one of these in a bit and you guys have been asking for one for a while now. Yeah, I'm here to please. So I asked you guys yesterday to send me some questions for today's video. Um, I love just having a chat with you guys whenever I um, do one of these videos. So you guys sent me some questions and I'm gonna go through them while I do some sketching. So let's get into it. So I've got my iPad over here with your questions and also I've got Pinterest open with just some ideas that I had a look yesterday that I might want to do some sketching of. So I don't have much uh, left in the sketchbook. I think I've got like four pages left uh, in the sketchbook. So uh, I think that means there's a sketchbook tour coming soon. I haven't been sketching much recently, so this is going to be nice. I've just been really busy with... Um, with uni stuff. I've got all my deadlines coming up soon, so I've just been working hard on those and also uh, doing some other work. So sketching has been a little bit in the back burner recently. Okay, let's begin with the questions, shall we? Okay, so the first question comes from us from Megan Alessandro27, who asks, talk about your uni experience, more about the course rather than the social life, etc. That's a good question. Um, so I, for anyone who doesn't know, I'm actually about to graduate. It's a very weird time to graduate, but yeah, I'm about to graduate. I'm in my last year of university and um, I now have the full experience to tell you guys about it and I might make a, a, a whole video about it actually because there's a lot to say you know because you know with uh, with three years of, of my life you know it, it was a lot of stuff happened and there's a lot to talk about so I feel like I might I might make a whole video about it but um, yeah university um, I went to university at uh, Leeds Arts University and I did animation. Um, I did a foundation year actually before that where I basically explored a bunch of different um, types of courses in within the art industry to help me decide which course to actually go into and that was really really helpful because when I went to university I didn't actually know what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to do something related to art because that was always you know a given. Um, but I didn't know exactly what and I was feeling a little bit lost and during my foundation year I, re I realized that animation was a job that you could do and once I realized that I was like yeah that's it that's that's what I want to do and my experience at university at Leeds Arts was was, was really good actually um, it's you get a lot of support from tutors because it's a it's very it's a very small course still animation not just at Leeds Art but at a lot of universities it's always a small course so you get a lot of um, support and time with the tutors because they obviously don't have that many t like students to go back and forth from so you feel supported and you've always got like someone to go to if you if you're having trouble um, so in terms of the course I really liked it, it you, you do learn a lot of stuff I, I went into um, my animation course knowing virtually nothing about animation so everything I learned was during the course um, of course they you know they can't really um, teach you everything in three years there is a lot that goes into animation I do wish they taught us more about stop-motion I feel like um, our course lacked a little bit in in that department but um, I feel like now at the in the third year we had some new tutors come in who have been making up for that and they seem to know a lot about stop motion so um you know it's a very it's still a very new course so they're still trying to figure it out and um it is getting better every day and i i overall had a great experience uh, on my course i it was really lovely and i learned a lot <laughs> like a lot a lot a lot of things um which is great it's what i you know set out to do was to learn stuff and you get to create a lot of things as well. You have they have amazing facilities. Leeds Arts Uni has one of the best facilities um, across the country, I think, uh, for um, animation. I went to a bunch of different uh, universities for interviews and tours when I was uh, picking a, an animation course to go to, and Leeds Arts University, like hands down, was the best one in terms of facilities. So, so the next question is. Oh, also from Megan. Um, what are your favorite animation styles that you use slash do? Um, 
With animation, I obviously have a very, very polar opposite <laughs> style to my drawing that I, I do for um, my free time and for illustration uh, because it would take years if I try to do some animations in the in the very like rendered you know realistic style that I like to do my drawings in it would take a very long time so yeah my animation styles that I like doing is like very cartoony obviously and simple <laughs> just so um, cause I really like the animating part of things, so the simpler the better and it, it just helps with, you know, when you're actually animating, it makes things a lot easier. Uh, I do love, you know, taking inspiration from different shows that I've watched, obviously, so I love, you know, taking inspiration from Adventure Time and... Uh, Gravity Falls and just all those amazing 2D shows that um, have really nice character designs. Uh, I always try to keep it simple, especially because I'm not like a very prolific character designer. So <laughs> I, do, I always try to go simpler when I'm the one handling that kind of stuff. Do you plan to make an Animal Crossing gaming channel? <laughs> it's a great question. Um, I spend a lot of my time playing Animal Crossing these days, obviously, as does the whole world. And I've wanted to like start like Twitch streaming my Animal Crossing playthroughs, but I don't exactly have like a monitor that I can like um, connect my Switch to and then like you know stream it. But um, I am planning on buying like a monitor, uh, like a proper computer when I move. Uh, in the foreseeable future. So maybe when that happens, I'll start Twitch streaming my, my gaming sessions uh, because I watch Amanda Rachel uh, do hers and it seems like a lot of fun and I'd love to do something like that with you guys um, because, you know, Animal Crossing is just a good time and, it, and it's, you know, this, it'd be nice to like have some of you guys come over to my town and you know, have like a fun house party at my at my house in, in Animal Crossing. I think it'd just be fun. So maybe not not the gaming channel because I really can't be asked to like be taking care of an, another channel. Uh, <laughs> one channel is enough for me um, as as a a second job. So cool. Next question: What was the most exciting thing that happened this week? Uh, <laughs> I got a new blender. <laughs> I know that sounds sad, but that is probably the most exciting thing that happened to me this week was that I got a new blender and uh, I love it very much. I recently really got into smoothies um, because why not? <laughs> I love smoothies and it's been kind of warm here in uh, in the UK recently, like on and off, but it's been, we've been having some warm days. So it's nice to have like a smoothie with you while you work and you know, it gets, uh, it gets your five a day in. It's healthy and um, and it's a nice refresh refreshment. Um, so I got a new blender and it's beautiful. It's sexy. It 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 it's just yeah. I got this blender and it's all I could think about until it arrived. Um, so it, yeah, it's just it's just a very cool time. Um, and I think besides that, oh, this week as well, I, I had my last actual um class session uh, for university uh, it was uh, through uh, google hangouts but it was really nice like seeing um all my classmates again and just seeing everyone's work it was like a crit session so we got to see everyone's work up to date and see how everyone's films are going and just talk about um like everyone's films and because you know i haven't seen them in months uh, or, or anyone's work in months so it was really incredible seeing how much work people have been um, putting into their work regardless of how uh, how much the world has changed since I last saw them um, it's just it was just really nice we saw everyone one, one more time through a tiny little screen uh, it was just uh, just a very nostalgic but nice session I'm also just warming up with some sketches of some faces that I had on my Pinterest that I haven't sketched out yet that I've been wanting to, 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 to 
try out so yeah nothing too crazy just warming up a little bit um, i've been having some really bad problems with my wrists um recently like just some uh, some trouble with RSI, so um, again, haven't been drawing much, so when I do draw now, it's like a lot a lot harder to get a grip of my RSI. Um, um, LCS, LCS Sketches asks, how's being productive in quarantine been? Um, good question. It's been okay. I'm naturally i'm a very productive person like i use productivity to make myself feel better um like doing stuff is what get my gets my mind off things and being productive gets my mind off things and i really enjoy working a lot sometimes i overwork myself um in as a way to avoid other problems but um <laughs> so yeah i have been productive during quarantine i don't really have much of a choice because i do have you know deadlines coming up and um, yeah, being productive is just my way of like keeping things as, n as normal as possible during these times. Yeah, me and Devin have just been getting on with our work, with university work, and we, we've set up like our workstations downstairs in the living room so we can work next to each other and work together so at least we, we motivate each other and we, we listen to podcasts, we listen to music sometimes uh, just to, you know, help time pass by but uh, at least we, we have company for each other to while we work. And um, obviously the first few weeks was a bit harder because uh, that's when Animal Crossing came out. <laughs> so I was doing a little less work than I wanted to, but it was just the first initial stage. It's completely fine if you're not being productive during this quarantine, everyone deals with things in different ways and if you know, sitting down and doing work is something that makes you feel bad, then obviously, like, unless it's crucial, you don't really have to do it right now. Like, give yourself time to adjust and heal and whatever. Um, I, I, my way of, like, healing and taking care of stuff is to get my mind off things and doing work. So, um, I guess it bodes well, um, in some ways, <laughs> having that kind of coping mechanism, because at least I get stuff done. I've also been keeping busy with, you know, doing making YouTube videos and um, I had some freelance work which was really nice because uh, that kept me busy and doing something different to uni work for a little bit. It was like a nice change of pace. So yeah, just been uh, trying to keep busy with different things. I've also tried to pick up some new skills. I, I've been trying embroidering for the first time. I'm not great at it, but it's fun, so I'm trying it out. And of course, um, the best way to, for that I've found to keep myself productive when every day just seems like the same day over and over again um, is I, me and Devin have established like very, not strict, but very like, like rules on in terms of work days and weekends. So um, we work from Monday to Friday, um, a normal schedule from nine to five, uh, as if we were going to uni every day and working and stuff. So we just kind of try to establish that weekdays are work days. And then when it comes to the weekend, we don't really do work anymore. We do uh, this kind of stuff. So I like filming videos and drawing and playing Animal Crossing until I fall asleep. Um, uh, on the weekends and uh, I feel like that's really helped us with productivity because it helps establish like a sort of schedule and that helps with productivity in the end uh, so if you're having trouble with that kind of stuff I, I definitely would say give yourself some structure and a schedule um, even if it's just separating weekdays to weekends um, it always helps because it helps you um, I don't even know how to explain it. it just helps your brain realize that there's some sort of structure in your life and um when it comes to the weekend you can recharge and get ready to be productive again in the next week and also this uh this sort of system has made these quarantine weeks go by super fast don't know why but it just really has it, it for, for me it's it's everything's been going really fast like weeks will just go by like that um because you know i'm just working
next question. If you could have a private lesson with any artist from history, who would it be? This is a really nice question. Um, I'm not sure. There's so many artists that I would love to have a private lesson from. Um, oh, so many. There's, you know, obviously Botticelli and just all of his friends. Um, would love to have a sort of workshop with him, obviously. There is this one oil painter from ages ago who I fell in love with when I was in Edinburgh. And I'm trying to see, I know I've got a post, a, a little postcard with his artwork on it somewhere in my room. Oh, this guy, right here. Um, yeah, John Singer Sargent, that's him. I'd love to get a private lesson by this guy. Um, I always forget his name, but he's probably one of my favorite artists. Um, since I found out about him, he's got like gorgeous portraits. I saw a lot of his works at in Scotland. So yeah, I'd love to get a private lesson from John Singer Sargent and Botticelli. Um, so that was a really nice question though. Thank you very much, Megan. Abroad, um, next question. How have you been feeling during quarantine? Any tips on how to distract yourself slash not get anxious? Another great question. I've been getting this question a lot. Um, uh, and I'll be gonna be real, anxiety has been very difficult recently, um, as of course it, it has been for everyone. Um, uh, it hasn't been easy, I, I'm gonna be real. I have, I've had a lot of like panic attacks and stuff out of the blue, just because of, you know, all the stress that everyone's under. Um, you know, most of us, if not all of us, have probably never lived through something like this so it's very natural for everyone to be feeling very stressed and very confused and very anxious and not really knowing how to cope with this because of course we haven't been taught how to cope with this um i i will give you guys a little uh some of my top tips that i've found have really helped me during this quarantine and the best thing that you can do is probably just distract yourself until until things get a little bit better. Um, so I love watching like a, a good funny TV show. Um, top ones are New Girl, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Those always make me laugh, but obviously those aren't for everyone. So just definitely find like your TV show that makes you laugh and feel good um, every time you watch it. Like it's different for everyone. So just remind yourself of which ones those are and then plop those on. Um, I have also found that yoga has really been helping me a lot and like just light meditation. It, like not when you're feeling bad, you, you, like it's more of a preventative thing I think. Um, it's been, it helps me a lot with winding down after a stressful day and just kind of relaxing and letting go of all of my anxieties. Um, me and Devon do a lot of uh, yoga with Adrian. <laughs> She's really good on YouTube and she has tons and tons of different classes. She has a bunch of yoga for mental uh, wellness and, uh, and stress and anxiety. Uh, and she also has a lot of, you know, yoga to work out to, which is uh, me and Devon have found are really, really nice and cool. And you work out, but you're also still feeling really good. You're like, it feels like you're doing something good to your body. Um, so. Uh, yoga has really been helpful. Um, I, I feel I, I really have been enjoying that for mental health and um, You know talking to someone. Um, I know that one sounds really duh, but it, it does really help when you talk to one of your friends whether it's by through the phone or on Skype or whatever it is um, Just just talking about stuff and, and you know getting real for a second it, it helps to know that you're not alone out there feeling like this and um, that your friends are there for you. And yeah, definitely have a chat with someone about it uh, because getting it off your chest as opposed to just letting it ruminate inside of your head is one of the best things that you can do. Um, a great podcast is a great way to distract yourself through the day. Um, I have a ton of podcasts that I um, have been getting through during this quarantine, which is great. It's 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 good because you're not left alone with your thoughts in silence. I hate working in silence. Hate being it, just in silence. I hate silence. Okay, I always have to have something going on in the background, otherwise I will probably go crazy. So definitely a good podcast. Maybe if you've had some podcasts that you've been wanting to get into, or you've never really gone into podcasts and would want to try them out this is definitely the time to try those things out and um, I really like podcasts because it doesn't it makes you it at least sounds like there's someone there with you it's like a great company um, especially for these times where everyone feels very lonely and very um, like they're going to go insane so uh, I'll say that some of my favorite ones are 
my dad wrote a porno uh, and that's why we drink um i really enjoy no such thing as a fish and the tmg podcast um what else do i really enjoy uh drawfee had a podcast that i still really love re-listening to called uh what should we draw i really enjoy their podcast um you know ended a a few years ago but i still love re-listening to it and um yeah there's tons and tons of podcasts christine from uh simply neurological has a podcast now which is very interesting and very educational so i really enjoy listening to her podcast um simply pod logical yeah and yeah there's just so many podcasts out there it's you know the new the new age um and then maybe if you want you can listen to my podcast <laughs> that i have with devon um we don't have that many episodes out but you know Maybe if you're interested in trying something new. Our podcast is called Binge Inking. So, yeah, maybe give it a listen. (laughs) Uh, Next question. If you're not an artist, what would you be by now? Um, great question. Um, I'd probably be a doctor. <laughs> um, I know, very weird, but um, all through high school, I, I thought I was going to go be a doctor. I, I really do love um, doctors stuff and biology, and uh, I've, I've always been intrigued by uh, medical practices. Um, you know, maybe that's because I, I grew up in a veterinary hospital because both my parents are vets. So I've always, you know, been very hands-on and helping with that kind of stuff. And I'm not queasy about that kind of stuff as well, which is always a bonus. I always, I think I, I wanted to be either a neurosurgeon or a plastics surgeon. Um, Also, I have, like, literally no plan for these sketches today. I'm just going with whatever I feel. I don't really have any idea what I'm going with or doing, so I'm just gonna see what happens, you know? How is the process to film a stop motion? Very good question. Um... For anyone who doesn't know, my final film for university is stop motion. So um, I've been posting a lot of like little snippets and, you know, process videos on on my Instagram over the past few months of me creating it. It's almost done, almost completed, but um, there's a lot of processes that go into making a stop motion film. I've learned. I'm just going to say what I did instead of saying what you should do, because it's probably not right. There's a million ways of doing things. So yeah mainly the how i did my final film is came up with a story wrote a script for it then my friend morgan storyboarded it um and then meanwhile while well, that was happening um i was making the puppets um i did the character designs before that obviously I was making the puppets a lot of trial and error meanwhile emma my friend was making the sets meanwhile the props are also getting made basically everything needs to be made before shooting begins so there's a very large pre-production stage with stop motion where you're just making a lot of things um and then production is actually um is mainly just shooting yeah so then production is actually quite short compared to like a 2d animation where um it only it's it's mainly just shooting (laughs) where with um 2D animation. There's a very large production chunk of in the in the process uh, because there, you're animating a lot of scenes, and each scene might take a long time because there's a lot of layers to it. Um, whereas with stop motion, you just kind of shoot it once or, or like do it once, and that's kind of like it. Um, so yeah, then you do the shooting, you do all of that. And then in post production, it really depends on what you're doing with your film, but you know, you're keying stuff out, you're removing wires, removing rigs, and you know, the stuff that's holding the puppets up. And uh, you, you remove green screens, all of that stuff. And then you, you might want to add some, you know, some hand drawn stuff on top of it, maybe. Who knows? So uh, all of that goes into post production. And then obviously, there's music to think about and foley sounds, like little, you know, like like sounds like that uh, that you put into it and um, then you just kind of put it all together (laughs) and it magically becomes a movie. Um, It's fun though, all of it is fun. I I really have been enjoying doing my stop motion final film a lot. 
uh, how to get colors to work together slash come up with color palettes. Um, great question. I, I don't really know yet. I'm still trying to get comfortable with color. I'm not very good with, um, you know, color palettes and color theory and stuff like that. Um, so I'm still learning myself. Um, I, I definitely try to like come, like see what colors I think um, would look cool together and then go with them. I know that there's a bunch of rules that you can follow to like learn how to do it first. I know that there's, you know, complementary complementary colors and like, you know, all that kind of jazz. I definitely would advise uh, you to learn to like have a read some books on not even books, but just read up on uh, color theory um, and just have like the basics down basic basically before you go and experiment because um, I, I had had some you know some I did some research on color theory and learned about the basics and and then you go off and you know I don't know I, I I'm not the great person to ask this to because I just kind of go by the does it look cool together yes cool I'm gonna use it are you a carpet person or a wood floor person oh definitely a wood floor person I cannot deal with carpets this entire house that I've been living in for the past two years is like almost fully carpeted and it drives me insane. Just, uh, I have a asthma, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, and it is so bad for asthma. Like carpets and rugs and stuff are really bad for people with asthma because they just they grab onto the dust and the allergens like, like that. And then you, you can hoover it as much as you as much as you want, but it, it just stays there, and um, it's just very. It makes everything very warm. I love wooden floors. It's also much easier to keep clean. Okay, I'm sorry, but it is. It's just easier to clean. You you mop it. You hoover it. It's done. Whereas with carpets, it's just like if you get some, if you spill something on a carpet, it's you know it's gonna stay there forever. What do you do when you get discouraged when a drawing is not turning out the way you want? Um. An, an interesting question. Um, I would say that when I'm drawing and it doesn't seem to be uh, a good drawing day or things aren't going the way I wish they were going, um, I definitely try to either do one of two things. If I feel like I, I'm i just rusty, I'll power through it and just warm up more and more and try to um, retry it later if I, if I warm up a little bit. If I realize that I'm just feeling really like mad about it, like I really don't like how this drawing is starting out and it's actually making me angry, I will like take a step back, you know, go, go do something else. Maybe don't even draw the rest of that day, uh, but I'll, I'll definitely stop for a bit and go do something else. And uh, when, when, when you come back, it'll look completely different. It always does. It's, uh, it's that, that's the magic with drawing. It's just that it's, uh, it can look super different with a, a fresh pair of eyes and um, it's the, one of the best things you can do is to just look away, do something else and then come back to it. Next question. Plans for after college goals, future plans in general, would consider a live sketch with me, by the way. Hmm. Um, so yeah, after university, which is um, sooner rather than later, uh, <laughs> I am uh, planning on moving to Manchester with uh, Devon and another friend of mine. And I've got a, an internship lined up and uh, hopefully a, a job after that. So um, yeah, I'm very excited. I have, you know, like stuff lined up. I'm very lucky that I have stuff to, to go to and to do. Um, and yeah, just try to normalize life a little bit after this entire mess that's going on. Hopefully things will go back to normal a little bit sooner rather than later that would be great but we'll see and also the live sketch with me thing by the way very interesting i might consider that that sounds very cool why did you quit making colored pencil drawings i get this question a lot i didn't quit doing pen colored pencil drawings i just had a phase where i did a lot of colored pencil drawings it's kind of how i got popular on instagram and gained a lot of my following a few years ago um 
I did a lot of fan art and a lot of drawings in colored pencil because um, I got this big set of colored pencils um, for my birthday one time and they were like the most fancy art supply that I had so I used them a lot and I, I was like one of the first mediums that I got really comfortable with um, so I used them a lot and then I started you know trying out other mediums and I'm, I'm a lot into like experimenting and, and trying out different mediums and I love I love wet mediums now so I've just it's it wasn't it's not that I quit doing pencil color pencil drawings it's just that I've gained other interests and I do still draw with colored pencils sometimes um, just not as often was maybe one of these days I'll I'll do a little time lapse of me using colored pencils on here who knows Next question, what drives you to wake up every day and decide to make art? Um, a bold of you to assume I make art every day. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm joking, I kind of do. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't wake up every day and I feel like today I'm gonna make art. It's kind of like a uh, wake up and I'm like, what needs to get done? Work, work is kind of art. So um, yeah, I, I, I make art every day because it's my job, um, but also because it makes me very happy. So if, um, you know, it's like, if you love basketball, you wake up every day and you're like, huh, I wanna go play basketball today. It's kind of like that, you know? I feel like I kind of need it to, to stay sane. So I feel like that's kind of the, the drive is, is that mainly. Um, it makes me feel sane, happy, and nice times. Some days I don't make art. Some days I just play Animal Crossing until I look up and it's been 15 hours and I'm like, huh. Mm. Um, R. Bambi asked me, do you read books? I do read books. Yes, I do enjoy reading a lot. Um, I read a lot of um, murder crime mystery novels. I, I, I love those a lot. I, the, the first books that I really really got into when i was a teenager where i read all of the agatha christie books that she's ever written uh, my mom and i are very big agatha christie fans so i read a really good book last summer um that really was like oh my god this is good uh, it's probably one of the best books that i've uh, read in a while it's called an unwanted guest and i really recommend it if you're into that kind of stuff into that kind of a book uh and apparently today I feel like drawing a lot of fabric folds. So that's what we're doing today. How do you deal with hate or do you even get it? Um, yeah, I do get hate. I think everyone gets hate. That's just how the internet works sadly. But um, I kind of laugh a lot of, at it. Um, I, I have found that uh, YouTube is the, the, the worst one uh, in terms of hate. I feel like uh, I get the most hate on YouTube. Um, which, you know, makes sense. There's just a lot more people on there and a lot more, I have a lot more people watching my stuff on YouTube. So there's bound to be a lot more hate, obviously. Yeah, uh, my Instagram's a very, very chill, very, very wholesome place. So I don't really have that problem on Instagram, but um, when I do, I just kind of laugh at it. I, I'm very chill about that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, like I don't, I'm not a person that gets very torn up about um, a, a comment uh, I see from someone who I don't know. I just kind of like, hilarious. I just, I normally what I do is I screenshot them and send them to my group chat with my friends and we all just laugh about it because most of them, whenever I do get hate, it's always very stupid things. <laughs> so it's always very laughable. Um, Cause you know, I'm not a very controversial person so I don't really, have a lot of controversial content on my on my social media so when i do get hate it's very opinionated stuff as opposed to someone you know really hating on something i've said or something i've done um it's not really laughable stuff but it it, it has taken me a few years to get to this mentality of like laughing at laughing at the haters um <laughs> no uh, i make videos on youtube because i really enjoy making videos on YouTube and now thankfully like I'm very lucky that it's it's provided me with some money to live off of um, and I'm very grateful for that so um, but in the end I started making YouTube videos because 
I really enjoy them. So I'm, I, I'm not really going to let strangers um, take that away from me, you know? Paloma Thompson asks me, how are you doing mentally? Thank you so much for asking, Paloma. I'm doing okay, actually. Had a very few rough times during this quarantine. I had a bunch of moments where I had panic attacks, where I was trying to fall asleep, and then I didn't sleep for a few days. I got food poisoning twice, which in turn made me have two depression relapses. Because um, in case anyone doesn't know, there's a very strong connection between your brain and your stomach. There's a very, very big, um, like, hormonal and connection there. So whenever um, I have, like, stomach problems or, uh, like, obviously food poisoning, I get very, very depressed <laughs> for a few days until that passes and I can't eat. And that makes the depression worse. It's a whole thing. But, you know, I'm good now. Yeah, I'm doing okay, actually. It could be worse. I'm very anxious, um, but nothing I can't handle. I'm anxious about, you know, having to move under this this climate at the moment, because um, I'm, I'm moving very, very soon in like the next two months. So that's scary. Thanks for asking, Paloma. I hope you are doing very good mentally as well. Carolina Barbosa asked, what program do you use to anime? Good question. Um, it depends. Uh, so. For like very kind of chill animation projects, like for a GIF maybe, or like a little little title sequence, something that doesn't involve a lot of layers, um, I'll probably just use Procreate because I can just do it on the couch and it's pretty simple and easy to use. I have some tutorials on that on my on my channel if you guys want to check it out. But for my um, like for a big animation. Uh, like a 2D animation for a film or something, I will probably use like either TV Paint or um, Animate CC. Animate CC is with the Adobe Suite and it's very good for um, animations that are vector based or like clean line kind of based, whereas TV Paint is for more like maybe artistic and like different kind of brushes situation. Um, they all different art, art, different animation softwares have different benefits and uh, pros and cons. It just depends on what I'm, uh, what I'm wanting to achieve, really. There we go. And with that, we have completed today's sketch with me. I'm just gonna zoom out so you guys can see what I've made today. So we didn't sketch too much. Um, I, I just did a little bit of, of drawing, really, but. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for all of your questions. We had some very interesting questions today. Um, it was really fun. I enjoyed chatting with you guys. This is what we made. This is what we, what we drew out today. I had fun. Thank you guys so much for watching and for keeping me company. I hope everyone's staying safe, staying sane, staying at home if you can. Um, hopefully this will all Everything will go back to some sort of normality very soon. But in the meantime, just try to stay sane and be kind to yourself. Have a great week and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.